This is the 2020 Ford Transit 150 XL passenger wagon with all-wheel drive, and today we're going to review it. Today we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, guys in a ride. ride. And what do you say, Nate? What are we taking a look at today? Today, folks, we're taking a look at the brand new redesigned 2020 Ford Transit 150 XL passenger wagon with all-wheel drive. That's right. But before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know about all the technology that's built into today's vehicles, plus you like cool collector car stories, take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Oh, let's, let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right. All right. Well, you know, first thing I got to say is, what of you? I feel, I, feel like, I feel like I'm on top of a mountain uh, looking down the side. This, you know, it, the transit's up quite high. Um, I feel like I should be wearing brown and stopping at every house and giving them a package. <laughs> well, you can do that if you want to. I'm just going to keep going. You just have to jump out. The transit comes with a number of different packages. Uh, one of them is um, a rear and front view camera. You get rear view camera standard. And so this one has that. This one does not have the front camera, but you can get that as an option. Uh, and then you've got parking sensors. Uh, you can get parking sensors front and rear. So with the two of those combined, you'd have an easy job of parking. Okay. Uh, plus you would have, with that, you'd have an eight inch uh, infotainment screen, which gives you a, a, you know, a little bit more of a view um, this one has the smaller screen, uh, so it does have the back of the camera and it works great. Um, but you know, we're used to seeing fairly large screens, so it, you know, it, I, I would opt for the larger eight-inch screen. In terms of getting in and out of the vehicle, uh, you, you know, it's it's a step up. But they've made nice grab handles. Oh yeah. Uh, they made the steps nice and big getting in to the truck, um, and so you'll see that on, on the overlay. And so getting in and out is it's actually quite easy despite the fact that it's really a step up and a step down, but it's not, they've made it as easy as possible. You know, the interior ergonomics are, are actually pretty good, I think. Um, I, I can easily reach uh, the infotainment screen without moving from my seat. I've got all the steering wheel controls that control most everything, plus I have uh, voice command. So pretty much anything you need to do as far as technology goes, you can access you know, right through your steering wheel controls. In terms of comfort, I'm actually fairly impressed. I, I, I mean, it, it's the bumps are so, it's softening them up. I wasn't expecting this comfortable of a ride from this. I like my seat. It sits up nicely. The one thing I wish that it did have a little different is you've got uh, the extra internal ratcheting armrest. Mine didn't get that. They knew you'd be sitting there. I guess. All right, so I am going to pull over, and I'm going to let Rob drive. Okay, my turn. We'll take a look at this. It's a big van, and I'm sure on the highway you're going to pick up a little more road noise, a little more wind noise, but overall, it's not really that loud. No, it's not. Now, if you pack this thing with eight people, and everybody's talking and snoring or whatever, it's going to get loud, but as far as the vehicle goes, it's, it's not bad at all. Um, safety systems, a lot of your basic safety systems. Uh, you've got um, crosswind assist, you've got ABS, you've got the backup cameras, you've got parking sensors and things like this. And I'll cover those in more detail on my exterior review. Uh, fit and finish, well, you know, it's a purpose-built cargo van. This particular one has actually been turned into a passenger van. There's a lot of hard plastics in here. But the seats are comfortable. Even uh, these are vinyl seats and they're comfortable. Um, fit and finish, you know, it's on par with a cargo van. It's not bad. It's not Cadillac or Mercedes Benz, but then again, you're not paying those kind of prices either. So on par, I'd give it a B. 
acceleration. Well, let me get out here and we'll see. Okay, I think it's like zero to 60 in 10.2 or 10.3 seconds. I'll, I'll verify that on my exterior review. Not bad. Uh, definitely it's gonna have more hesitation when it's loaded with cargo and people, but it's a big van. It's a long van and it seats eight people very comfortably. How about that back there, Nathan? I mean, as far as room, leg room and passenger room. Yeah, it, it, the, I, my knees are touching this seat right here. Okay. But just barely. It's It, it would be fairly comfortable for you know a, a ride. How about being that you're back over the uh, axle? Is it bouncy so far that you've noticed? No, or? actually, it, it's not. I pick up a little bit of noise. Yeah. Um, but no, not bouncy at all. Okay. Okay. It's just surprising. Well, that's cool. That's really good. So anyway, coming up next is my exterior review. And then a little bit later after that, Nathan will give us a tour on the inside. Uh, this one doesn't particularly have a lot of built-in gadgetry and, and, and uh, techno wizardry like uh, some of the vehicles we've done lately. So we won't have a how-to video on this, but Nathan will walk you through the whole interior front to back and show you everything that's available in this particular van. So keep watching. This is the low roof regular length transit van for 2020. And again, this is the XL150. It's presented here in ingot silver and it has a dark palazzo black vinyl interior and this particular one is stickered at $48,165. It's powered by a 3.5 liter 24 valve double overhead cam, naturally aspirated V6, and it produces 275 horsepower and 262 pound-foot of torque. It's driven by a 10-speed automatic overdrive with select shift and all-wheel drive and it does have an auxiliary transmission oil cooler. I like that, it adds to the longevity of the transmission. Now up front, you'll see it does have the carbon black grill, but it does have the chrome bars and chrome surround. It has the auto high and low halogen headlights, and you see the carbon black front bumper. It does have, on this vehicle, the optional halogen fog lights, and up top, it does have the rain sensing windshield wipers. Let's take a look around the side. This does have the heavy duty front axle. It has an independent McPherson strut front suspension with stabilizer bar. And out back, it has leaf springs with heavy duty glass, uh, heavy duty gas shock absorbers. Now it also does have four wheel anti-lock brakes and they are four wheel disc and they are both 12.1 inch front and 12.1 inch rear. Now we see it is just standard grade 16 inch silver steel wheels with the exposed heavy duty lug nuts, but they are wrapped in 205-75R-16C black all sidewall all season tires. Now there is a short arm power adjustable and manual folding outside mirrors. You do see it has the carbon black body side moldings. On the other side is the capless fuel fill and it does have light tinted windows. Now this is a manual sliding door. Well the opening width is 51.2 inches and then the opening height 49.6 inches and I like that it's got a step. It is kind of a high step, but it is a step transition into the inside of the vehicle. Let's walk around back and take a look there. Out back down below here, you do have the uh, rear view camera with the trailer hitch assist. It does have uh, the exposed body colored door hinges and these are 50-50 split rear doors with 180 degree opening and the handle's right in here. There you go. Right door opens first. The opening height is 46.9 inches. The rear cargo door opening width, 59.8 inches. And you see it does have the light tinted glass. It also has the carbon black step bumper. That's not bad. It's about the same as over on the other side. And it has a reverse sensing system and there is a rear tow hook. Now, let's talk about cargo volume. Rear cargo volume. Well, volume behind the first row, 
224.5 cubic feet. Uh, cargo volume behind the second row, 151.8 cubic feet. And then cargo volume behind the third row, 94.2 cubic feet. But ah, wait, doesn't stop there. This is a four row van, so cargo volume right here behind, behind the fourth row is 39.1 cubic feet. Maximum cargo volume, if you remove the front passenger seat and all of the other seats, 280.9 cubic feet. Cargo floor length uh, from the sill to the back of the front seat, 124 inches. Cargo width at the door, 59.8 inches. Cargo width between the wheel houses, 53.7 inches. Maximum cargo height, 52.8 inches. And cargo load height from here to the floor, 28.2 inches. Now, let's talk about some of the safety systems on this particular van. Well, you have forward collision warning. You have hill start assist, lane keeping assist, post collision braking, pre-collision assist with AEB, advanced track with roll stability, and one of my favorites because this is a higher profile, you have side wind stabilization, and you have the optional blind spot information system with the rear cross traffic alert. Now, some of the packages available for this van, uh, you can get the modified vehicle wiring system. Uh, there is a tow haul mode with trailer wiring. There, you can also have uh, installed the remote start. It does have available a heavy duty trailer tow package as well. Let's take a walk around the side again and let's talk about the dimensions. Front track 68.2 inches, rear track 68.6 total width 97.4, total length 219.9, height on the low roof 82.3, and it rides on a wheelbase of 129.9 inches. The front overhang is 40.3, rear overhang 49.7, and it has a base curb weight of 5,856 pounds. Fully loaded maximum cargo 2630 pounds capable of towing up to 4,400 pounds. Turning circle, 42.9, 25 gallons of gas, and it has a 5.7 inch ground clearance. Now, let's talk about safety, or our spade scale and safety being first. It is rated five out of five stars by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Performance, zero to 60, 10.4 seconds. <laughs> Appearance, well, you can see it's big and boxy and it's a passenger or cargo van in a myriad of combinations from Ford. So basically, what you see is what you get, but it certainly gets the job done. Now, dependability, it does have a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty, and five-year, 60,000-mile roadside assistance. Pretty good, pretty comprehensive about what you'd find with any other manufacturer today. Economy, 14 city, 19 highway, 16 combined. So now let's take a look at the inside, but before we do, take a moment, give us a like, and please leave a comment, and don't forget, click on that subscribe button down below. So what do you say, Nate? Take it away. All right, on the inside, the door has just a, a huge amount of storage area. You've got uh, an area right down here. You've got a bottle holder here. You've got one of your speakers. And then you've got an additional area down here. Uh, you've got your unlock and lock buttons right here. And then you have uh, auto up and down for the driver's window. And then just standard power window for the passenger. All the materials up here are just uh, uh, hard plastic, but they look really nice. Now, in addition to that, you've got a little reflector in the door here for warning for uh, traffic going by. And then you do have a little pocket holder, which of course the symbol says is not for a cell phone. All right, on the seat itself, it is uh, a three-way manual. So you have the pull bar here to slide the seat forward and backwards. You have the battery underneath the seat here, and then you have uh, a reclining, so you can recline backwards or forwards. Now, what's interesting is the fuel cap door here, and I'll show you this because it has to do with the driver's door. This little lip here 
close this in underneath the drawer, okay? And in a sense, locks it so it can't be open. So you do have to open the driver's door to open up the fuel cap. So I, my guess is to avoid fumes in the cab, you would then reclose the door and fill it. And then you'd have to open it again to close it. Just an interesting design there. All right, you do have uh, the, the floor here has got a nice rubber mat that goes all the way across. You got a nice footrest here, of course your standard pedals. You do have another, uh, would be like a bottle holder, but you'd wanna have a cap on it right there. You do have your mirror controls right here. And this does have power folding mirrors. So in this position here, uh, if you push down, they'll fold in. And if you push down again, they'll fold up. This has uh, auto lights on it. It also has auto high beam, low beam. You have your fog lamps, and then you have your dashboard dimness controls. Now up here, you have an additional cup holder right here. Now I'll show you this now, because it's a little easier to see from this angle. But up on top of the dashboard, you have this long area for storage, and it goes underneath this little shelf right here. So it fits things, it goes another, like a, almost a hands width underneath. Okay. And then you have a USB plug-in right here, as well as a 12 volt outlet. All right, let's step in and take a look. All right, so this is a keyed uh, start. So you just press the button on the remote and it pops open. Key inserts right here on the uh, column. Okay, so uh, on the dashboard, you have an analog tack, you have an analog speedometer, and then you have uh, engine temperature and your fuel gauge. And then in the middle, you have your driver's information system. Moving back, you have uh, on the stock, first of all, you have your lane keeping assist button on the end of the turn signal stock. And of course, it's your turn signals and then your, your bright and dims. And then over here, you have all of your cruise control uh, buttons right here, along with volume and a mute button for your media system. This does have adaptive cruise control on it. Okay, so up is set, down is uh, minus, or an up again can be plus when you're in cruise control. This is your on and off for a cruise control. Cancel, and then this one here is your limit set for miles per hour. Over here on the right, you have controls for your driver's information center here, as well as a skip forward, skip backward, um, for your media and uh, you also have voice command uh, if you press and hold the voice command button you can also get uh, access to Siri if your phone is connected through Bluetooth over here on the uh, right here you've got of course your windshield wiper controls and then down here you've got a couple of your safety systems here you've got your parking sensors on or off I like it that it actually says off, not and doesn't just light up. And then you have some different modes. So what you have here, I think I have to press OK first. So what you have here is you have uh, normal driving mode, eco, slippery, mud and ruts, and tow haul. You know this is a, an all-wheel drive vehicle now. Over here you have, of course, your uh, traction control on or off and you have a little uh, light that comes on the dashboard you do kind of have to push and hold it for just a couple seconds all right I like the fact that it is not a push-button transmission and in fact you do have a, a, a manual uh, mode as well and then your your shift for the manual mode is right here on the left side of the shift handle moving over to the center you've got a little storage area right here and then you have uh, the infotainment screen. Now this, this uh, is standard. You have an optional eight inch screen that will come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. This particular vehicle does not have those, um, but it, it certainly is functional. You've got your radio presets right here. And then down here, you've got a power on and off, volume, and then a tune button. And then since this is not a touch screen, the eight inch is, uh, you can uh, go through all the menus right here. And then there's a push to OK button, or you can push to tune on the radio. 
Right? Down here you have a whole bunch of different buttons that are kind of for different things. So this one here will take you to your radio. And then if I hit this, I can actually tune. Okay, and when I'm at a station I want, I just press OK, and there it is. This one over here is your media. Right now I've got my phone running through there. Over here you actually have your phone. If I click on that, I can look at recent calls, contacts, or dial. And how I would do that, again, is not touch screen, but I'd rotate through this. Okay, and then I would, whatever I want to see, I'd press OK. Okay, next one over here shuts the screen off. So if you don't want to have that light on at night, you can do that. To press it again and it comes back on. Over here you have some additional settings. So if I press that, you can use this knob to rotate. You have access to your media through Bluetooth. You got Bluetooth itself. You got the clock. You have general and you have display, connectiv connectivity features, and of course parking. Down here you have got your sound stuff. So you got your treble, middle, bass. And this has the standard uh, sound system in here. So I did increase the bass all the way and it actually sounded pretty good. So. I like that. And then of course you have your fade and your bounce. And again, you just rotate through, press the button, and then you can change it. Uh, this does come with um, a different mode. So if you want uh, all the speakers on, you can. If you press that, you can say it's optimized just for driver as well. You got a uh, tune backwards, tune forwards, or skip a track, or uh, skip to the next song and say Pandora. You got a play pause button. And of course, this is your back button. Down here you have all physical controls for your climate control. This is a dual zone climate control system and it's divided between the front and the rear. So you got your fan speed, you got your uh, max AC here, you've got your max defroster there, you got your temperature setting right here. If you go like that, that's the max. And then if you have it all the way to hot and click it, you get your defroster. We don't want hot today. Of course, you have a power on and off. You have your mirror defroster right here, and then your uh, front defroster there, and then you have um, your different modes right here. Usually, you see three modes, but if you just uh, right now, the legs is not it's not blowing down below, so it's coming out of the vents really strong. And if you would click that, then it would come much stronger down through the bottom vents and not so much through here. Okay, and then of course you have recirculatory and AC. Moving down, you have your hazard buttons here. Then down here you have a USB plus a 12 volt outlet. And then two cup holders with a pass through area. The glove compartment itself is fairly large. You've got some coin storage right in here. And then very, very deep, but you're gonna wanna get out of your seat to access it. So each person in the front has got four cup holders or, or bottle holders. Uh, you know, you've got this one here, you've got the one in the corner, you've got the one straight below that, and then you've got the one in the door. And the passenger seat is exactly the same as a driver's seat. They're actually fairly comfortable. They're, they're vinyl, but they feel good, and they are actually, yeah, again, they're quite comfortable. All right, let's uh, move on up here. And you do have a standard rear view mirror. And then up here, you've got your second part of your climate control system here. So you have got um, temperature setting here, as well as the modes up here. And then you've got your fan speed right here. Now there's no controls in the rear for the passengers to control that, but you can definitely have that on. And then you have, of course, your dome light up here with uh, your, your controls for whether it comes on or off when the doors are open. The visors themselves are monstrous. There is no, uh, there's no mirror in here and they do not telescope, but they do not need to because they are massive. They cover everything from one side to the other. You do have a little strip here where you can put in your, uh, some important papers. And the passenger side is just the same. The uh, infotainment screen does have a backup camera that is standard on all uh, transits. So you can see it right there and you've got a couple of things that are happening. First of all, you've got the guidelines there, okay? And they are dynamic, so they swivel. 
And then you have a uh, magnif uh, magnifying glass where you can magnify into the uh, hitch view if you want or back out. And then this is your rear uh, parking sensors right here. Let's step into the back and take a look. All right, so opening the sliding door takes a little bit of a firm tug at the very beginning. Once you get it sliding, it slides really easily, okay? From the inside to open or close it would be this handle right here. Now, you've got a really nice uh, wide step and opening here, but it is a step up, so you're gonna wanna use the grab handle to get up. So one of the things they've done, because this was originally designed as a cargo van, is that all of the seats are removable. Uh, so you've got a, a two-person seating here, you've got a two-person seating here, you've got a three-person seating in the back, and then of course you have a jump seat or a, a, a single seat right here, which allows you to, to have a nice open area to climb into, and then of course walk back to any one of the seats. Uh, the jump seat itself, is comfortable but it's short as far as width goes I'm, I'm i'm right up against there so it might not be a super comfortable spot to ride for a long distance all right the driver's seat is where i left it and i have at least uh, three to four inches headroom's ridiculous i mean there's no concern there that's that's huge okay and i'm fairly comfortable uh the on the left hand side of the van there are usb ports uh one usb port at each seat. There are cup holders on the right for the very rear fourth row on both sides, but only a USB on the left. So pretty comfortable, not adjustable at all. You can't recline it or anything. You can't slide it forward or move it backwards, but you can remove it if you don't want it. All right. You do have seat pockets on the back of both of the, the front seats. Right. In the third row here on the double seats, I, I've got minimal space from my knees to the front to the second row, but I'm not touching. So that's pretty good if you're not touching at all. And again, you got a cup holder and a USB on the left side. Let's climb in the fourth row. In the fourth row, I'm sitting in, in the middle seat right now, comfortable for a middle seat. And I have a little bit more knee room, not much. It's minimal, but again, I'm not touching. I can put my feet uh, my feet out a little bit. Uh, I may be just brushing it, but it would be fairly comfortable. Okay, and if I sit behind this seat, I've got a little more room because this seat actually sits a little bit further forward, maybe an inch than this one does. There is an option on the very back seat to have a 12 volt outlet put in uh, next to the cup holder. This particular van doesn't have that. You do have air vents two for each row and so you can of course turn those and aim those wherever you want which is really nice on such a big vehicle you want to feel some air flowing on you and then you've got reading lights at each row and for the back row it's right back here a little awkward to reach but it's right there of course you have child anchors on each of the uh, the rows so you can put uh, children's seats in almost any position here. So overall, very roomy in here. Um, I think if I had it, I'd probably take out the back row and maybe move some of these seats around. You can reconfigure them a little bit um, and you have a nice uh, amount of cargo room in the back uh, with this seat gone. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. All right, so my favorite thing is that on the door, because the plastics are extra wide, they've built in an armrest for you, and it's really a wide armrest, really comfortable, fits my entire arm plus a little bit. And then you have this ratcheting armrest on the right side. You can put it all the way down and then just lift it up until it's comfortable for you, and you've got some really nice uh, uh, arm support here. That's my favorite thing. Okay, my favorite thing is the abundance of cup holders for the front. You've got these, then you've got up here, then you've got one here that looks like it holds a liter size bottle, and then of course you've got more in the door panel. That's my favorite thing.